third, St. Hubert, Bishop. Nobility, sanctity, apostolic zeal, and the gift of miracles have made this great man one of the most illustrious prelates of the first century of the French monarchy. The son of a French non-Christian nobleman, he was raised at the court of Thierry III, son of Clovis II, and was esteemed there for his morals and prudence. He remained, nonetheless, a man of the world, for he did not yet know what the spirit of mortification, prayer, and fundamental humility of a Christian were. He married a daughter of a Count of Louvain, who was virtuous and recommendable by her exceptional qualities. St. Hubert remained passionately fond of hunting. In fact, he is the patron saint of hunters, and it was through this passion that God, taking pity on his soul, stopped him in the midst of a hunt one day to make of him a zealous apostle fit to bring the light of the gospel to the same regions that had been the theater of his vain amusements. One Sunday, when Hubert went to hunt in the forest of Ardennes, a magnificent deer he was pursuing suddenly stood before him, and to his amazement he saw a crucifix amid its antlers, and he heard a voice saying to him, Hubert, Hubert, how long will this vain passion make you forget the salvation of your soul? Do you not know that you are on earth to know and love your Creator, and that in this way possess Him in heaven? If you do not turn to the Lord and live a holy life, you will fall into the depths of hell. This voice and the sight filled him with amazement and fear. He leapt down from his horse, prostrated himself on the ground, adored the cross of his master before him, and protested that he would abandon the world and consecrate himself entirely to religion. He then went to see Bishop St. Lambert for instruction. Under his direction, he made progress in the ways of God. He conceived a desire for a more perfect life. At that time, his beloved wife died on giving birth to a son. This son would later succeed his father as Bishop of Liege. Hubert renounced all his dignities, military duties, and the dukedom, which he inherited at the death of his father in the year 688. He assigned his rights to his brother and confiding to him his son, three years old. He distributed all he owned to the poor, braving the calamities and insults of the world he had long served. In the year 689, he went into a solitude in the forest of the Ardennes near a monastery. There he lived a very austere life for several years, undergoing violent attacks from the ancient enemy, who did not cease to remind him of his former life of ease. His profound humility aided him to triumph over these ruses and become very alert to the presence of the holy angels and of God assisting him at all times. St. Lambert desired that Hubert make a pilgrimage in his name to the tombs of the apostles in Rome, and the saint obeyed. While Hubert was there, Bishop Lambert was martyred, and he himself was miraculously assigned by the Pope as his successor. The Pope dreamed he should give him the pastoral staff of the deceased St. Lambert, and found that staff beside him when he woke in the morning. He could not doubt the reality of the admonition. Additional supernatural interventions assured St. Hubert himself of the designation, and he was obliged to obey. When the saint returned in possession of the pontifical habits of his predecessor, which had been miraculously brought to him, the people too were obliged to recognize their new bishop. He proved himself humble, sober, chaste, vigilant, modest, fervent in prayer, patient, and a great friend of the cross. He became the refuge of the poor and the afflicted. All the unfortunate were welcome to come to him. He received them as his children and helped them in every possible way. He brought the intact remains of St. Lambert back to Liege and built there a magnificent church dedicated to the Blessed Virgin and St. Lambert. St. Hubert taught his people to have recourse to processions carrying the relics of the saints to obtain rain, to rid the fields of destructive insects, and for other public necessities. The humility of St. Hubert never diminished through these divine favors granted his ministry. Rather, his fervor increased day by day. St. Hubert died after dedicating a church, despite his advanced age at the request of his flock. He was seized by a fever, which eventually overtook him. After bidding farewell to his son, and by means of holy water, driving away a demon who was tormenting him to the last, the holy bishop died on May 30th in the year 727, and was buried in the church of St. Peter at Liege.
In the year 743, his body was found intact and emitting a fine fragrance. When the tomb was opened on November 3rd, his feast day was assigned by the church to this date. In the year 825, the body was still identically conserved when his tomb was again opened and he was transported to a monastery in a town renamed St. Hubert.